Okay, good afternoon, boys and girls. I'm a little late getting to my story today, but let's jump right into it. Yesterday, the Gnome King made a deal with Ozma that she could go through his palace and touch 11 things and say the word Ev. And if the object turned back into one of the royal family members, they were free to leave. If they did not, and Ozma used all of her 11 guesses and didn't find anybody, then she would get turned into a decoration in this palace as well. And all of the people who are with her, Dorothy, the Scarecrow, the, the soldiers, all get the same chance. Um, so we're going to jump into the next chapter. It's called The Eleven Guesses. <clears throat> Remember, Ozma has 11 guesses to find the queen and her 10 children. That's 11 people. So let's see how she does. The Eleven Guesses. Hearing this condition imposed by the Gnome King, Ozma became silent and thoughtful, and all of her friends looked at her uneasily. Don't do it, exclaimed Dorothy. If you guess wrong, you will be enslaved yourself. But I shall have eleven guesses, said Ozma. Surely I ought to guess one object in eleven correctly, and if I do, I shall rescue one of the royal family and be safe myself. Then the rest of you may attempt it, and soon we will sh we shall be free of... We shall free all those who are enslaved. What if we fail? inquired the scarecrow. I'd look nice as a piece of bric-a-brac, wouldn't I? We must not fail, cried Ozma courageously. Having come all this distance to free these poor people, it would be weak and cowardly in us to abandon the adventure. Therefore, I will accept the Gnome King's offer and go at once into the royal palace. Come along, men, my dear, said the king, climbing down from his throne with some difficulty because he was so fat. I'll show you the way. He approached a wall of the cave and waved his hand. Instantly an opening appeared through which Ozma, after smiling her farewell to her friends, boldly passed. She found herself in a splendid hall that was more beautiful and grand than anything she had ever beheld. The ceilings were composed of great arches that rose far above her head, and all the walls and floors were of par polished marble, exquisitely tinted in many colors. Thick carpets were on the floor, and heavy silken draperies covered the arches leading to various rooms of the palace. The furniture was made of rare old woods, richly carved and covered with delicate satins, and the entire palace was lighted by a mysterious rosy glow that seemed to come from nowhere in particular, but flooded each apartment with its soft and pleasing radiance. Ozma passed from one room to the other, greatly delighted by all she saw. The lovely palace had no other occupant, for the Gnome King had left her at the entrance, which closed behind her, and in all the magnificent rooms there appeared no other person. Upon the mantels and on many shelves and brackets and tables were clustered ornaments of every description, seemingly made out of all sorts of metals, glass, china, stones, and marbles. There were vases, and figures of men and animals, and graven platters and bowls, and mosaics of precious gems, and many other things. Pictures, too, were on the wall, and un the underground palace was quite a museum of rare and curious and costly objects. After her first hasty examination of the rooms, Ozma began to wonder which of all the numerous ornaments they contained were the transformations of the royal family of Ebb. There was nothing to guide her, for everything seemed without a spark of life. So she must guess blindly, and for the first time the girl came to realize how dangerous her task was, and how likely she was to lose her own freedom in striving to free others from bondage from, of the Gnome King. No wonder that cunning monarch laughed good-naturedly with his visitors when he knew how easily they might be entrapped. But Ozma, having undertaken the venture, would not abandon it. She looked at the silver candelabra that had ten branches and thought, This may be the queen of Ev and her ten children. So she touched it and uttered aloud the word, Ev, as the Gnome King had instructed her to do when she guessed. But the candelabra remained as it was before. Then she wandered into another room and touched a china lamb, thinking it might be one of the children. <clears throat> but again she was unsuccessful. Three guesses. Four guesses. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten she made, and still not one of them was right. The girl shivered a little and grew pale even under the rosy light, for now but one more guess remained, and her own fate depended upon the result. 
She resolved not to be hasty and strolled through all the rooms once more, gazing earnestly upon the various ornaments and trying to decide which she should touch. Finally, in despair, she decided to leave it to, entirely to chance. She faced the doorway of a room, shut her eyes tightly, and then thrusting aside the heavy draperies, she advanced blindly with her right arm outstretched before her. Slowly, softly, she crept forward until her hand came in contact with an object upon a small round table. <laughs> she did not know what it was, but in a low voice she pronounced the word, Ev. The rooms were quite empty of life after that. The Gnome King had gained a new ornament. For upon the edge of the table rested a pretty grasshopper that seemed to have been formed from a single emerald. It was all that remained of Ozma of Oz. <laughs> In the throne room just beyond the palace, the Gnome King suddenly looked up and smiled. Next, he said in his pleasant voice. Dorothy, the Scarecrow, the tin, and the Tin Woodman, who had been sitting in anxious silence, each gave a start of dismay and stared into one another's eyes. Has she failed? asked Tick-Tock. So it would seem, answered the little monarch cheerfully. But that is no reason one of you should not succeed. The next may have twelve guesses instead of eleven. For now there are twelve persons transformed into ornaments. Well, well, which of you goes next? I'll go, said Dorothy. Not so, replied the Tin Woodman. As commander of Ozma's army, it is my privilege to follow her and to attempt her rescue. Away you go, then, said the Scarecrow, but be careful, old friend. I will, promised the Tin Woodman, and then he followed the Gnome King to the entrance to the palace, and the rock closed behind him. So Ozma was unsuccessful. Keep in mind what she got turned into. A green grasshopper made of an emerald. And that'll be important later. Okay? Do you think that the Tin Man will be successful in finding anybody and turning them back into their persons? Or do you think he will get transformed into an ornament as well? We have the Tin Woodman, the, cow the Scarecrow, Dorothy, all of the soldiers from Oz, that's like 30 people, uh, that can go in and make guesses. So eventually somebody's got to get lucky, right? Make some predictions about what you think may happen next, and we will pick this up in over a week because next week is spring break, and Mr. Price has given us tomorrow and all of next week to just rest. So... Have a great weekend, and I will talk to you in a week.